long, uh, you know, workload. So uh, first of all, I'm going to give a quick introduction about the, what the problem is. Uh, for our uh, large scale uh, data centers, the memory errors uh, happens uh, not quite rare. So it's uh, not quite often, but not quite rare. So uh, there are two kinds of uh, errors. First one is uh, encrypted errors. The other one is uh, crypto errors. Uncrypted errors usually means uh, the errors cannot be fixed by hardware. So your data is uh, actually corrupted. For crypto errors, it means the errors could be uh, fixed by hardware. So your data is actually consistent. And uh, for the memory failure handler in the kernel, it really, uh, I'm, uh, here I'm referring to the encrypted errors. So for uh, page cache, uh, the memory failure does truncate the hardware poison uh, page from the page cache, regardless of the uh, gr uh, clean um, dirty. So even if a uh, page cache is dirty, it's going to be get uh, truncated by the memory failure handler. So uh, this truncating, uh, truncating dirty cache may cause some uh, problem, for example, the data, data loss. Because uh, once we truncate the page cache is uh, truncated, the later access will read the data from the disk, but actually the data is already inconsistent. So, uh, but the problem is that, uh, the bigger problem is that it's a, a silent uh, corruption because uh, there is no any uh, notification to the users from the kernel uh, as long as the page is uh, not mapped. So, yeah, this will cause the, the problem is that uh, the truncation, the memory failure will cause uh, data data loss, and uh, it's very hard to to debug. Once uh, even though we uh, are aware of some uh, data data corruption or data loss, it's uh, not easy to uh, trace back to memory failure because uh, sometimes you uh, maybe uh, didn't think of that it's uh, caused by the uh, uh, memory failure. And uh, the solution is that uh, I'm going to propose a, a, a simple solution is that, uh, first of all, uh, we keep the poison dirty page in uh, page cache instead of uh, truncating. So, and uh, the, the second step is that uh, we have to make the other first teams be aware of the poison page because uh, uh, in our current uh, design and the implementation of the first teams, there's no no check about the if the pitch, uh, whether the pitch cache is uh, poison or not. So the first teams assume the data in pitch cache is always consistent and uh, actually uh, ignore the the poison page. So we have to uh, to uh, make the all the first things be aware of the there is a there may be a poison page existing in the page cache, so uh, it uh, involves uh, all the uh, uh, we have some uh, some bullet points about uh, some uh, passes uh, related to the page caches in the first thing code. The first one is a read back, so I think read back is uh, is fine as long as the dirty flag is uh, clean. And the second one is uh, job caches and other other colors which may uh, invalidate the the pitch cache. So we should uh, prevent from uh, invalidating the the poison pitch caches. And the third one is that uh, uh, truncate and the uh, hole punch and uh, something similar. It should uh, fine to allow uh, truncate, uh, you know, uh, invoked by the by the users because the users explicitly request to remove the page from the page cache, so it means the user doesn't care about the data anymore. And uh, the uh, first step is that we need to notify the applications and user space to, uh, by returning some error code when the Python page is uh, accessed, for example, in the read and write uh, path. Actually, uh, the page fault path already handles that, and uh, for some other passes, uh, for example, uh, compression or encryption, I'm not quite sure because I'm not a first team expert, so I need some uh, advice from uh, like fellow first team developers. And uh, we uh, approach it. So uh, by, uh, to make the first teams be aware of the Python pages, we could choose uh, three 
they have three, uh, basically have three choices. The first one is uh, to just uh, simply check the HW hardware poison flag uh, in the every code path we, when accessing the, the page, for example, the read and write, because there is a page flag called uh, hardware poison. So when the, the memory failure code will uh, set the, the flag for the poison page, so we can just check the flag to know if the page is a poison or not. The uh, second, the other, uh, sorry, the second uh, choice is that we just return now from, from the page cache lookup code for any uh, poison page. It's a, I think it's a, uh, the simplest way and the uh, encoded list works. But the disadvantage is that all, uh, maybe not all the passes, but maybe the most uh, call size when the uh, now pointer, page pointer is returned, the, the first thing assumes it's a, a no memory error it's a, and uh, don't assume it's a, uh, other errors. So uh, if we return the no memory errors, uh, it sounds uh, confusing to the, to the users. So it's still, uh, the, the users may still be not aware of this uh, data uh, consistent issue. And the third way is that we can uh, return the uh, error pointer instead of now. And the, but this, incur, this may incur uh, more changes because uh, some passes actually doesn't care about uh, if the page is a uh, poison, for example, truncation, but it uh, does care if the return the page pointer is now or not. So you already the code just check if the pointer is now or not. Uh, if we return the external uh, error pointer, we have to uh, add actual code to uh, to tell the if the the page is a poison and now um, it's a just a, uh, a normal uh, regular page. So uh, the steps to the fix problem. Okay, is, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just good. Hi. Hi. I'm I'm, I'm just going to stop in here. Could you go back to the previous slide? This one. Okay. So we we can't do either of those second things. But we can't do the poison, we can't return null, and we can't return error pointer, mm -hmm. because the information about whether a page is poisoned is per page. Yeah. But everything is being converted to the folio lookup rather than, the, rather than doing a direct page lookup. Mm -hmm. So that's just not going to work, because you uh, might not be accessing the part of the folio which has the hardware poison. Yeah, I know, but uh, actually the memory failure is going to split the large page. But that doesn't Split the large page to the base page. But, so, but, and but, set, but set up the... Page split doesn't always succeed. Sorry? Page split does not always succeed. Uh, yeah, but it return uh, error code that the memory failure handler is failed. And uh, so, yeah, but uh, I get your point. It will leave the large page with the poison sub page in the page cache. So we cannot know uh, which data sub page is a poison. Yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, I agree it's a problem. Yeah, so we may have to find a way to, to resolve that. So I, I, think, I think that first approach is the only one which actually works. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, there is uh, another flag called uh, page has, uh, I forgot the name, but uh, it actually said in the head page and tell the kernel that there is uh, at least one sub page is a poison in the large page. Yes. So we can check that. And uh, if we found that, and we maybe have to uh, iterate every sub page, but it's uh, not no, very no, no. optimal. So I, 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 I understand that that exists, but if, if somebody is reading a part of the folio which is not hardware poisoned, then that should be allowed to succeed, and we can't do that with either the, or the second or third option here. Mm -hmm. So we have to go with the first approach. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, so uh, for actually, I did the convert the TMPFS with the first approach. Yeah. Could you see? So w one of the things we're doing recently on the DAX side is telling the file system that a failure happened. So I'm wondering if that's another approach. If the page is already dirty, you know that uh, the data on the, on the storage is bad. You just you still do the truncate, but then you tell the file system to record mm -hmm. record the error, and then when they try to read it back, then they get the EIO from the file system. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I, I think uh, we could use uh, maybe the similar solution for the pitch cache too. Yeah, I, I'm inclined to support that particular solution because, mm -hmm. correct me if I am wrong, mm -hmm. but it appears that since the information is only being kept in memory, yeah. once the system crashes, all knowledge that the there is a dirty page that was never written back mm -hmm. is lost and you still have silent data corruption uh, it's just that what is on disk is either non-existent or the previous contents of the page before it was modified. Mm -hmm. So it seems like this is an awful lot of work to only allow EIO to be returned until the system is rebooted or crashes. Um, and I guess the question is, how worthwhile is that? And if we're going to go to all of that effort, um, it's a certainly more effort to ask file systems to keep state yeah. about the fact that a particular page is corrupted. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe that's the better approach if this is really a problem. Uh, and maybe the, quest the next question is, uh, do we really need to do this on the granularity of a page or do we, I suspect for many use cases, the file system could just simply mark a flag on the file, right? The entire inode saying the contents of this file is suspect. You should restore from backups or take other, uh, you know, administrative means to recover. Uh, and that might be a little bit more of a practical approach? Yeah, uh, first of all, uh, uh, first of all, I think uh, your uh, concern about if it's uh, worth it, I think it's uh, valid, but I don't have a good answer for that. So first of all, uh, the memory failure does happen, I said, uh, not very rare in the large uh, scale data centers, actually. Uh, I do, uh, you know, tackle a lot of problems about that. But uh, how often it happens on the dirty page cache, I don't have the data, so I cannot tell right now. But I agree it uh, involves a lot of work for the first developers. So, yeah, it's a question. I, I think the question is valid, it's like, uh, worth or not. And for the second question, uh, I uh, to set a flag for the anode, to mark all the anode is a, uh, the whole file is uh, corrupted. Uh, I'm not quite sure if uh, you, if the user doesn't care about that, if uh, it should be fine. But if uh, just uh, one page is corrupted, for example, you have a big file, maybe a terabyte or a gigabyte, and uh, one 4K page is corrupted, you mark the whole file is uh, corrupted. I don't think it's also a good idea so either. I'm, I'm trying to understand the objective of this effort. Is it that you want to give the error code to the user and the user yes. handles it how exactly. he, he wants to do it? Yeah. Okay. In, in that so case, I think, uh, the, you know, uh, my point is that uh, notifying the user the problem is uh, happened or existed is better than setting the data loss. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah. Sorry? Uh, also, uh, can, can you use a uh, mic, please? I cannot hear you. It's also about preventing garbage from getting written out. Yeah. Going back to your, your point earlier, uh, Ted, if the system crashes, then the slate is wiped clean. Then we're all good. That that garbage uh, uh, memory doesn't exist anymore. That's That's the good scenario. Well, it's not entirely a good scenario because now, now, now we've had data loss. I mean, we've, you've always got some amount of data loss on my system powered off without warning, but you, usually it's, it's somewhat. But usually it's somewhat time constrained, right? The, 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 there are sinks that happen invisibly in the background every thirty seconds. You, you haven't lost that much, probably. But this, this, this could be this, this could be sticking around for years.
but but I guess if it's still in the page cache and you give a error to the user, the user could actually take that, move it to another file, and mm -hmm. recover that data and not lose it, right? Or am yeah, I yeah. misinterpreting? So I think that of all of this, the things that you've talked about, I think the flag makes the most sense because that's mm -hmm. easy to put into the generic code. And I think that if we want to be smarter at some point in the future, we can do that. But mm -hmm. we need to start with mark the pages yeah. as poisoned, mm -hmm. make sure that we don't return any data and we don't write that data out, yeah. and mark the mapping. We set, set mapping error, like Jeff did all of this work to make sure we returned <laughs> errors mm -hmm. to the user we should take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. And okay, yeah, does it suck that like, okay, you only had one page in this file go wrong, but not the rest of it? Yeah, but from my experience, we are not very good in the kernel or, and even worse in user space and dealing with errors in the first place. Mm -hmm. So having granule errors as opposed to like this file is unreadable, uh, let's, let's err on the side of the biggest blast radius so we don't cause more problems. So I think flag, put in the generic code, check for flag, if things are wrong, make sure it doesn't get written out, set page mapping, or set mapping error, and then we can have further discussions later on about yep. how mm -hmm. fancy we wanna be. Thank you. I'm just gonna point out that uh, for virtual machines you sometimes have like, um, fireback memory, mm -hmm. and the virtual machines can actually propagate, or like the hypervisor can propagate, for example, a memory error to the virtual machine. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in case you would be like damaging that whole file or prohibiting it from being used anymore, mm -hmm. you would essentially kill that virtual machine, although that virtual machine might be able to deal with the MCE itself. Mm -hmm. So that's just something to keep in mind when we're talking about like, uh, they're com completely corrupting the file, essentially, compared to only like a single page that a guest operating system might be able to handle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I, but, I but, but I mean, I, I agree. Like, it's the easiest solution to just mark the whole file as corrupt, but it doesn't apply to all use cases. I think you might you might provoke more harm than actually not doing anything. Yeah, yeah, right. So I, I agree for the VM case, where like all of a sudden the whole VM goes down because one page is screwed. Like I understand that, and I think that's a, a valuable thing, but we are going to fuck this up, <laughs> like in the generic case, for several releases. We need to get the normal, just the file is screwed case working, and then start talking about how do we handle this in the more fine-grained cases. Because yeah, okay, it sucks for the VM people, but again, Speaking of somebody that manages a humongous amount of machines, I don't care at all. I want to see that the thing died and that I need to replace memory. Mm -hmm. So like, we're, we're kind of like niggling about like things that, yes, we could do and we could do a lot, a lot better and do some fancy stuff, but we need to make sure that like the brain dead stupid case works first and then go from there. I also want to say that you, you got only needs to check in page access paths, i.e. read slash write. The, 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 there, there is an upside here. On, on, in the write path, mm -hmm. if you're writing the entire page, get rid of it. Get rid of the corrupted page because now you know what data should be there. Because it uh, it's just being overwritten by user space. I think uh, any, uh, writing the poison page should be prevented. Because the data is already consistent, you write back to the storage, the data is corrupted. No, no, I'm, I'm saying if, if, if user space calls the write system call uh -huh. and it's going to overwrite the entirety of the corrupted page. Oh, yes, exactly. Then you can throw away the corrupted page. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes. That will still be a problem with copy and write files because we, 
because it uh, flushes the data first, as in whatever is existing on the on the on the disk, and then g uh, gets. In a way, yes, but if you've taken a snapshot or something of that sort, then you're in trouble. Yeah, this is why I argue against fancy things in the first place. Mm -hmm. Like, we need to just fucking mark the pages error. We, like, we mark the mapping as error. Mm -hmm. We can even, like, add a fancier thing. Be like, okay, mapping has a hardware poison page. Just really do not write anything out, right? But I think that simply having a hardware poison flag and then building that, the putting the logic in all the generic places and all the file systems yeah. say, to recognize this flag and to do something with it, um, and then we can start looking at fancier, mm -hmm. fancier solutions. Right? Yeah. Thank you. Do you have anything else, man? Any? No, I don't have anything else. Perfect. Let's uh, let's go have some lunch. Yeah. Uh, people on the Zoom call will be back in an hour. Thank you.